All right, hello, hello, VCV Rack. Uh, in this tutorial, we will work on uh, building a simple subtractive synthesis patch um, driven by a sequencer. And our objective is more or less something like this. So those of you Netflix fans, you will probably recognize it from the title sequence of um, Stranger Things. It's not exactly the same. We're not using the same um, equipment here. Uh, maybe another time I can show you how to do it with Sam. But I think it's close enough and it's a fantastic exercise to get um, basic understanding of sequencing and, and uh, subtractive synthesizers and you know how to filter. So um, yeah, let's get started. All right, um, we have a fresh session. What a beautiful view. Uh, I'm going to le delete everything we have here because I like to start fresh. Um, oscillator, VCO, vo voltage controlled oscillator. Now we need another module now to, um, to hear it. So in VCV rack, it will be audio eight you need to set your proper audio interface and let's test left channel right channel i'm happy my uh, vcv rack setup works now there are a couple of convenience uh, quality of life um, tips i can share with you um, notice that it's very loud when i connect it directly so i usually like to have vca or mixer on the way because then i can I can work and constantly adjust the volume of um, my patch. So that's one thing. And another thing is if you have Valley package installed, you can just download it for free from VCV Rack website. There's a really nice, beautiful plateau reverb. By default is kind of uh, very, very wet. Um, so it's good to re um, have adjust it a little bit size decay uh, this is usually what is good enough um, you don't have to connect both left and right because uh, left is normal to right um, and then you have a stereo output there All right so we have a we have a simple reverb here um, it's very annoying to work with um, synthesizers when when it's it's just a pure dry sound um, very unpleasant. Okay, so now we have this basic uh, setup. The second thing we need is um, the sub subtractive thing, which is filter, VCF, the, the heart of uh, subtractive synthesis. So here we go, VCF, voltage controlled filter. And um, it's very simple. You route one of those waveforms through this filter. Now the question is which one? You don't want to route sine wave. It doesn't make sense in subtract uh, subtractive synthesis because there's nothing to subtract. There's There are no overtones. Um, so you want to choose one of those rich waveforms. Uh, I'm I'm going to use saw. I'm going to route it through in, in and I will take output from low pass filter. And that's it. This is basic setup for a uh, very rudimentary subtractive uh, synthesis. Now, it's just one note. So what I need to do is add um, a sequencer. So let's move to the next part, sequencer. This is um, an eight step sequencer with three rows. We are going to use only the first row um, and the way you connect it is you take row one and connect it to volt per octave of the oscillator. Now nothing will change because this row is in the zero position. But notice that as soon as you start bunch of random sounds. Now, we have eight steps, 
so technically we can get um, this arpeggio, this subtractive things or stranger things arpeggio here, a major seventh chord. Um, but we need to set these notes uh, very precisely. Now it's fairly um, difficult to do it um, by hand, but I'm, I'm going to show you what, what it will take. So let, let's, uh, let's uh, initialize it again. And what might help you is reduce number of steps to two. Now let's take third step. And I can keep going, but notice that it's very uncomfortable um, because those uh, I have to really fine tune these knobs. And the reason is that the scale is huge. It's 10 volts per each step. Um, and remember, one volt is one octave in Euro rack and in, uh, in VCV rack, obviously. So what I want to do is reduce that range from 10 volt to um, one volt to make my life easier, another quality of life improvement. And I can, again, use my VCA. In this case, I'm going to route it through in and, and then out. And notice that I can change this range. Now, ideally, you want, you want to set it to 10% because this will give you one octave range. You see this fifth step is octave above. Um, it's easier, but still very uncomfortable, right? It's, you still have to um, tweak these nodes and, and uh, find uh, the right tuning. This is the, the analog way. If you have a, a sequencer, this is how you uh, achieve that not necessarily perfect tuning. And in Stranger Things, if you watch the show, there, there's a monster theme where uh, the, cr the, the composers use actually synthesizer and you feel it's kind of detuned, microtonal. This is why they were using analog sequencer. We could use a quantizer, which I'm, I'm not going to show in this video, uh, because I want to show you another way, very um, conscious way of setting these notes. And here's what you need to do. If you know those notes, we need C, E, G, B, C, B, G, E. Um, you, you can first take number of um, half steps divided by 12, and this will give you voltage, right? Because remember, octave is just one volt. So we know that this fifth step will be one volt in this case. So if we remove this VCA, we can set it already to one. Notice that we're going back to this crazy 10 volt scale, but it's okay because if you right click and uh, let me show you, uh, you see now you, you can see my clicks. Uh, green is right, uh, sorry, green is left and, and, and uh, right is, is uh, red. So when you right click, you can set these values. Um, and if you want to calculate any note um, voltage, you just follow this formula and, and you'll get the numbers. So the first one is 0. Um, 0. 0.33. And let's actually listen to it while we're working on it. Zero point five eight three. Right, so in, in in now we have our 
sequencer set up by precise ratios that are calculated over here. Um, now, let's move to the next step, which is we need to add um, envelope. So we are here. Well, why do we need envelope? Notice that this sound is very continuous, nothing moves, it's just notes are changing, but nothing else. I could technically connect this gate to CV input, control voltage of this VCA. But you hear clicks and it's just very primitive. So we need a more, something more sophisticated here. We need to add um, an envelope, ADSR. Here's our ADSR. And how does it work? Well, you connect this gate output to gate input of ADSR. And each time uh, step changes, this um, ADSR will be triggered. So let's try. So for example, we could set very short attack, sustain maximum, right? And we achieve the same thing as, as with normal gate. However, if we set sustain to zero and decay to some low numbers and attack super low. Usually I like to leave those few milliseconds here, two, five milliseconds, so you don't hear the click. And that's how you get that, that more plucky sound. Um, because we are aiming for, um, technically for envelope that it's ADS, the, the more old fashioned uh, three-step envelope, uh, in order to achieve it, you need to match uh, decay with release. And that's how that, so when, when you, when you adjust one of them, try to adjust, uh, another one to a similar, similar value. So something, you know, improves, we have, we, the notes are separated. Great. Um, however, you don't have to control VCA from this envelope. You can also connect it to VCF cutoff frequency modulation. Nothing changes yet. But as soon as you move this knob, frequency CV, notice what, what will happen. So as you can see now, we have uh, a very simple patch with subtractive, very basic subtractive uh, synthesis, uh, where sequencer is triggering the envelope. The envelope is controlling cutoff frequency of the filter. Um, and at the same time, sequencer is controlling pitch of the oscillator, and the oscillator goes through the filter to our output. Very simple. Um, and if you build this, um, try experimenting with these four knobs, see what they do and how the sound changes and how, how you can shave the sound. And with uh, frequency, um, frequency CV, they usually need to adjust two of them at the same time. And if you want a more acidic sound, you can add resonance. It's up to you. Um, so that's a the, that's the basic basic patch. However, we can expand a little bit more. We can add uh, more VCOs and maybe another envelope. So, and why would we do that? Well, because the sound is so thin, you can thicken it by adding second oscillator. But the problem is that you need to mix that these two sources then before they go to filter, and that's why I am adding a mixer here. So now we're going through the mixer. 
and we are ready to add another oscillator here. And obviously this um, oscillator repeats the same note, it plays the same note. So we need to connect it just like this oscillator from sequencer over here. Now there are two oscillators playing at the same time, but I'm still not happy. It's a very thin sound because they are playing the same frequency. So the trick is, it's very common, you want to detune these oscillators slightly. So let's have this one use fine tuning uh, knob. Right? And uh, and the sound now starts moving and, and it's uh, it's a little bit chorusy, like chorus-like. Um, but since we added two oscillators, um, we can add extra one octave below. Uh, in this case, we we will take square wave, and we're going to tune it octave below. If you want to do stranger things, you still need to um, you need to transpose this octave uh, below everything. Um, you can just tune these oscillators individually. Uh, remember, octave below is just dividing frequency by by two. So 261 divided by two is roughly 130, more or less. Um, and in this case. 130 divided by 2 will be about 65. Right? And probably you want to speed up this tempo. We can also experiment with different waveforms. We can replace one of those upper oscillators with square wave as well. <laughs> 